совсем скоро просьба спортсменов покинуть ковер. Совсем скоро мы начнем нашу трансляцию.
На самом деле, честно говоря, я даже завидую тем, кто сегодня оказался здесь, в этом зале, несмотря на то, что я сам с вами сегодня здесь нахожусь, потому что сегодня, на мой взгляд, произойдет уникальное событие. Вы знаете, мы очень много говорим про сердце России, про Москву, центральный город, столицу России, но иногда мы отчетливо понимаем, что настоящее проявление каких-то чувств происходит в регионах. И с помощью этих чувств и людей, которые проявляют эти чувства, начинается развитие. Мы говорим о самбо как о родном виде спорта для Нижегородской области. В этом году, в конце этого года, в предновогодние праздники, можно уже прямо так сказать, мы отмечаем 60-летие со дня образования самбо нашего родного, отечественного, российского вида спорта здесь, в Нижегородской области. Все началось именно в этом городе Дзержинск, в котором мы сегодня вместе с вами находимся. И это особенно отрадно отмечать, потому что в предварительных мероприятиях до турнира, который сегодня проходил, мы чествовали чемпионов мира, а их огромное количество, которые именно отсюда, из Нижегородской области и в частности из Дзержинска. Мы говорили о преемственности поколений, мы говорили о том, как новые ребята, юные самбисты и те мальчишки и девчонки, которые только начинают заниматься самбо, относятся к истокам, к прародителям, к тренерам, к наставникам. Меня зовут Александр Белый, я низко кланяюсь с Нижегородской области за развитие самбо. Огромное вам спасибо. И расскажу вам небольшую предысторию. Когда-то давно я начал заниматься самбо, когда мне самому было совсем немного лет. И тогда я начал узнавать о разных героях самбо из разных областей Российской Федерации моей родной страны. И одними из самых популярных чемпионов были ребята именно отсюда, из Нижегородской области. Сергей Лоповов, Раис Рахматулин, многие другие, которые до сих пор являются для нас примером. Потом я стал ведущим, начал вести мероприятия, и как-то я помню, в 2010, по-моему, году первый раз приехал сюда, в этот город. Возможно, здесь даже есть в зале люди, те, которые были тогда, в этот момент здесь. Мне надолго запомнилось, как здесь ценят тех, кто был до. Потому что, когда ты помнишь свое прошлое, ты можешь построить будущее. Турниры памяти самбиста Нижегородской области Владимира Куликова проводятся уже 26 лет. И это заслуживает аплодисментов. Все держится на инициаторах, на его друзьях, которые знали его с детства, которые прошли с ним немалый путь, которые ценили его как человека и уважали как спортсмена. Они пронесли традиции, они продолжают делать это до сих пор. Сегодня состоится поистину, поистине уникальный турнир, в котором примут участие 16 спортсменов. Помимо специального боя этого вечера. Сегодня нам предстоит увидеть противостояние двух восьмерок по правилам спортивного и боевого самба. Восемь человек но победитель только один. Так будет в спортивном самбо, так будет в боевом разделе. Недавно состоялся чемпионат мира по самбо в Ташкенте. Там, возможно, впервые в истории победу в боевом самбо одержал спортсмен из Камеруна и стал действующим чемпионом мира. Сегодня он будет здесь, мы в это верим, на этом ковре и сразиться с нижегородским спортсменом для того, чтобы выявить сильнейшего. И это наш специальный бой вечера! Итак, дамы и господа, я недаром заговорил про Владимира Куликова, про то, что турнир «Владимир» и клуб «Владимир» называется в его честь, но начинает пропагандировать и популяризировать самбо по всему миру прямо здесь и сейчас совершенно новыми способами и инструментами. 
в 26-й раз проводится этот чемпионат. Внимание на экран. Владимир Куликов. Мастер спорта международного класса. Чемпион Европы. Обладатель Кубка Советского Союза, многократный призер первенств и чемпионатов СССР и России, коренной тюржинец, отчаянный спортсмен. Владимир Куликов, твоей светлой памяти посвящается этот турнир. Миновала сошельный порыв столько лет, и в привычку вошло что-то рядом. Друзья, прошу всех встать. И сейчас я прошу вас стоя поаплодировать настоящей мужской дружбе. Потому что именно на этих традициях, незыблемых традициях строится самбо. Огромное спасибо Владимиру Куликову и его друзьям. Низкий поклон за то, что они проводят этот турнир в 26-й раз. Четверть века. Задумайтесь об этом. Спасибо вам. Эти аплодисменты вам. Спасибо. Ну и, конечно, говоря о нем, 
я не могу не пригласить на эту сцену людей, которые знали его лично, которые дружили, общались с ним. И сегодня в открытии нашего специального турнира в новом формате мы просто обязаны пригласить их на сцену. Без лишних регалий Андрей Барынкин, инициатор этого турнира и многолетний организатор. И Олег Тактаров. Андрей Анатольевич, вам слово. Мне трудно говорить. 26 лет назад Волк нас покинул. А 30 лет назад мы с ним мечтали провести вот такой турнир, такого формата. Я просто... Нет, не так. Друзья, которые его помнят, воплотили просто эту Вовкину мечту. И эти друзья, они вокруг. Они всегда рядом. Они всегда помнят Вовку. Это не зависит от каких-то временных рамок. Это не зависит еще от каких-то критериев. Мы просто его помним, помним нашего друга. И будем помнить, насколько мы будем живы. И всегда хочу сказать спасибо тем, кто поддерживает нас в нашем начинании, кто с помощью кого мы можем провести такой турнир. И этот новый формат, я думаю, что зайдет зрителям, зайдет тем любителям самбо, кто хотел бы видеть наше наша самбо, наш вид спорта более популярным и более телевизионным. Спасибо. Да, Андрей 26 лет тянет на себя. Ну, Андрей во главе всех тащит это дело. И оно, как видите, с каждым годом все мощнее и мощнее получается. Володя у меня был рядовой. Я был сержант в лесу на точке Владимирской области, как сейчас это было в Шинели. В общем, для меня только почему-то все время с улыбкой я вспоминаю те времена. И когда я стал приезжать почаще со съемок сюда, первый раз приехал, турнир еще был маленький, на следующий год больше, а сейчас он практически мирового уровня, потому что восьмерку, которую вы сегодня увидите, она состоит из ребят, ну, сильнейших ребят, кто занимался самбо, наверное, если по миру найти, то они будут, в общем-то, занимать лидирующие положения, лидирующие позиции. Так что сегодня собраны настоящие чемпионы. Мы ожидаем отличное шоу. Наслаждайтесь, а ребятам пусть победит сильнейший и без травм. Дорогие друзья, таким образом наш турнир объявляется открытым. Ваши аплодисменты! Огромное спасибо нашим гостям. Просим их занять свое место в президиуме. Совсем скоро начнется главное событие сегодняшнего вечера. Я пока немножко расскажу вам о регламенте того, что будет происходить. Особенно для тех, кто только сейчас к нам присоединился. Сегодня нас ждут две восьмерки. Одна по правилам спортивного самба, другая по правилам боевого раздела. То есть с возможностью ударной техники. И там, и там присутствуют чемпионы, призеры чемпионатов мира, Европы. Все ребята очень титулованные. А значит, нас ждет бескомпромиссное противостояние. Давайте этому поаплодируем. Итак, мы начнем со спортивной восьмерки. Нас ждет Четыре схватки по правилам спортивного самба для выявления полуфиналистов. После этого мы сделаем то же самое по правилам боевого самба. Далее полуфиналы в спортивном, полуфиналы в боевом, ну и, конечно, финальные встречи в восьмерке спортивного самба для выявления чемпиона. И финальная схватка в боевом самбо для выявления лучшего в Гран-при 8. Совсем скоро мы начнем. Дамы и господа, я предоставляю слово 
главному судье наших соревнований. Судья международной категории Андрей Володин, город Иваново. Первую встречу будут обслуживать бригада судей. Руководитель ковра, судья международной категории Абдулоев Махмуд, Таджикистан. Арбитр, судья международной категории Аделов Ислом, Узбекистан. Боковой судья Тулиген Эрпол, Казахстан. Судя приступить к своим обязанностям. Судьи готовы. Телевизионные сотрудники готовы. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and готовы. here we go live from Russia, from the Дзержинск, Нижний Новгород region. And today we proudly present you the International Sambo Tournament. The battle of the champions of Vladimir named after Russian great sambo champion, the European champion Vladimir Kulikov. And this tournament is held for the 26th time. Just imagine it is being held for the one quarter of this century. And as you all maybe know that sambo has different styles and uh, different divisions uh, we know that there is a sport sambo we're watching now without strikes without punches without kicks only wrestling only grips only sweeps submissions and by the way i remind you that in sport sambo no chokes are allowed only locks arm bars knee bars and so on and so forth and uh, by the way, the fights are scheduled for five minutes. And uh, speaking about the combat sambo, we are going to see a little bit later. So this is practically the same like the sport, but uh, strikes and kicks and knee strikes are also allowed. But they are not, but they are not counted, actually. Only throws, sweeps and submissions are counted. And uh, maybe you all remember that uh, Sambo, the word itself, is an abbreviation of uh, several Russian words and translated to English that means self-defense without a weapon. So firstly, Sambo was invented and was created like a martial arts for the police forces and army forces. but. Some time passed and the sambo became sports. So several federations were created, were made, and I would like to say that uh, Russian sportsmen are real dominance all over the world and recent world championship only proved it. Oh, that was a nice move, splendid move. And you see, and the four points for Mikhail Dyanov from Russia representing Vixa City. And he's leading four to nothing now. And by the way, when the wrestlers, when the fighters are going on the mat, uh, here comes the armbar attempt, and this could be it. A very dangerous position for the fighter in the blue uniform, and he taps out, that's it. It's all over. What a splendid finish by Mikhail Diana from Russia. So fast and furious. And by the way, there will be three categories during our tournament. Uh, 64 kilograms, this is the sport sambo, combat sambo, 79 kilograms. And the main event, the heavyweight division over 100 kilograms. And all three winners will be honored. Three championship belts and of course, the money prizes. So, to conclude the previous fight, Mikhail Ziyanov defeated uh, Bele Korakanov from Kyrgyzstan due to an armbar, and he advances to the semi-final. Well, what a start. 
And just like I said, that uh, Russian sambo practitioners are the strongest in the world. And uh, when European Championship occurs or uh, World Championship, so of course Russian fighters come to this tournament being, a str being strong favorites and they prove this status from one tournament after another. And so here we go, just like I said, this is the international tournament and today we are about to see fighters from different regions, from Russia, from Armenia, from Tajikistan, Kyrgyzia, Moldova, Cameroon, this will be the main event and the reigning world champion will step on the mat. So let us meet these two fighters from the 64 kilograms weight. Aram Agajanan and Sorbon Latifov representing Tajikistan. Just like I said, the fight is scheduled for five round uh, for five minutes. Beg your pardon. And so Aram Agajanan is in the red form. His opponent, uh, Sorbon Latifov, is in the blue. And by the way, we see a tape on uh, Sorbon's left knee. Well, I hope that this is the preventive thing. I hope that he is not injured. And, well, his health is good enough to fight today for the main prize for the championship belt. And just like I said, that uh, the level of today's participants is really high because we are about to see world champion, uh, European champions, runners-up, uh, medalists of multiple international tournaments. And Sarbon Latifov gets two points for his throw. <laughs> and now he gets the lead. And the fight resumes. Well, the timing of the fight is clean, so to say. That means when the referee gives the whistle, the time stops and the referee shows the points or gives the warnings or something like that. And afterwards, the whistles goes again and the fight resumes. So these are the rules. Several judges are sitting beside the mat and they help the main judge to give points because they see, uh, they view the... Oh, that's a nice move! That was a good move from Sorbonne Latifov again. But I don't think that he will be awarded a point because Arama Gajanan actually showed a splendid defense. He didn't, let, uh, he didn't let the opponent to throw him on the back or on the side of the body. That could be mocked by the point. So, so this fight continues. Um, and a good sweep attempt and a nice counter. Arama Gajanan gets the control of the back, puts the hooks inside and Maybe he will try to submit the opponent. And I think that uh, Arama Gajanan tries to pull out the hand. And due to a really Low pace, the referee interferes into this fight and puts them back into the stands. So to be a good Sambo practitioner, of course, you need to have a very good cardio, very good stamina, because when you wrestle without a single pause, of course, you spend a lot of, a lot of powers, you spend a lot of energy. And by the way, speaking about the special guests of this tournament, I would like to say that if you see it on your screen, uh, or if you don't, I will tell you uh, the main VIP guest in this tournament, the first Russian UFC champion, Oleg Tektarov, who is a Sambo practitioner, who is a Sambo champion. And now, so he is here because... Oh, that was a splendid move! But only two points are given to Serban Latifov, but... And now he controls the attack move. He tried to control the back and uh, just like I said that no chokes are allowed in Sambo but 
And we see that Ara Magajalan is just not agree with the judge's decision. He thinks that no points should be awarded to Sorbonne Latifov, but it is what it is, and the score is four to nothing in the favor of Sorbonne Latifov from Tajikistan, and he is leading the way. <laughs> he is leading the fights, and uh, we see that he is really composed, knowing what to do, and a sweep attempt from Sorbonne Latifov. Arama Gajanel is on his knees now to try to make a throw. But Latifov was more than ready for that move. And so he defended himself solidly. And the fight resumes. And so I would like to say that uh, Sambo and uh, Comet Sambo, of course, it's uh, very good. But oh, the four points and that's it. It's all over. This is the flawless victory for Sorbon Latifa because he scored four points for just one attack. This is just like a knockout in boxing or kickboxing or MMA. And so Sorbon Latifa advances to the semi-final and he is about to face Mikhail Diana from Russia, from Vixa, and it will be just a dog fight, believe me. And we are about to see another quarterfinal in this weight category, 64 kilograms. Nobody could have expected that. Sarban Latifov just destroyed, destructed Aramaga Janan, who is also a very tricky fighter, a very tricky sportsman, but Sarban Latifov was just unstoppable. And now, here we go. This is the quarterfinal number three. Sports Sambo weight category, 64 kilograms. Moldova versus Kazakhstan. And I would like to say that Sambo, but that in these countries, the ex-USSR countries, Sambo is really well developed. And fighters and wrestlers from Kazakhstan and from Moldova, they always give a very good opposition to Russian wrestlers, Sambo practitioners at the World Championships and the European Championships. Well, Kazakhstan fighters always take part at the Asian Championships and, that, and afterwards, the winners come to World Championships and they face Russians. And so let's see it. Parasat Jumabai from Kazakhstan, he is in the red form versus Konstantin Chili, representing Moldova, he is in the blue. This is a very promising bout. I remind you that in, in sport sambo, no strikes are allowed, only submission attempts and throws. The referee warns the fighters to use their fingers more carefully. And you know what? Despite of the fact that in uh, sports sambo there are no strikes, we always, well, at the major tournaments, sometimes we see cuts and bruises on the sportsmen's faces, uh, some injuries, of course, because. And here comes uh, Parasad Jumabai. I think that he tried to catch the opponent's leg in order maybe to produce the knee bar or something like that. Knee bars are allowed in combat sa in sports sambo and in combat sambo, of course. And so uh, locks, leg locks, but no hooks, no heel hooks because they are forbidden and uh, uh, heel hooks are forbidden in, even in sambo. Um, one of the most uh, hard martial arts in the world and especially combat sambo one of the most uh, hardest martial arts ever existed so heel hooks are strictly forbidden because if something goes wrong and uh, the fighter denies tapping and the referee slows it down so 
this kind of submission can cause a very serious problem and injury of the knee. And here comes the throw, and uh, Barasaj Mumbai gets two points for that throw, for that move. And now he gets a short lead in this fight. But we see that both fighters are active. They are trying to produce some good attempts, some good throws. And so far, I think that the pace is not really high. And another attempt from Paratsa Jumbai. Good counter, Konstantin Chili. Now he's in the top position. Gets the opponent back, but not enough time to do something. So when you come on the mat, you have to be very quick. You have to produce some move immediately. Otherwise, the referee will interfere to the fight and to put you back into the stance. So that's why you have to be very quick. You have to think very quickly. So half of the fight passed, and the score is still two to nothing in the favor of Parasa Jumabai. And uh, we mustn't forget that this is the Grand Prix tournament, so you cannot win just only one fight and spend all your powers on that. And uh, afterwards, you have to step on the mat and uh, you have to fight in the, in the semi-final and uh, then in the final. So that's why you have to save your energy for the further fights. Well, just like I said that the heel hooks are forbidden in the sports sambo and in the combat sambo, but you can make leg logs. Uh, leg locks, and they are allowed. So that is exactly, I think, what uh, Konstantin Chili tried to do in the previous episode. Here's the warning for the fire in blue, Konstantin Chili. And 90 seconds to go in this fight. So far, the advantage of Parasad Jumabai is not, well, it's not really big. So that's why he cannot stay calm. He cannot uh, just wait until the time expires and he has to do something and another good attempt. And uh, we see that Konstantin Chili gets the first point in the fight. But as far as I can see, uh, Konstantin starts to get tired. He's not exhausted yet, but he has already spent some powers trying to collect points. Constantly tried to grab the leg. And a good counter. Oh, look at this. This is the armbar. And he taps out in just 50 seconds till the end of the fight. Splendid move by Parasad Jumabai. Wow, that was so electric, that, that was so fluent, so unexpected. Well, and it was firstly unexpected to Constantin Chile, who did not even see this kind of move, and he just had nothing to do but just to, pass, to tap out and to confess him a loser in this fight. So. Look at that move. And uh, here we go. What a final number four, the last one. So far, all the quarterfinals did not go the distance. There were submissions and the flawless victory after Sarban Latifa from Tajikistan. And here comes Dmitry Stoyanov, the medalist of the World Championship. And Alex
Polisher, Davla John Hamroev, multiple world champion in Sambo. So just like I said that the level of this tournament is really, really high. The level of the participants and just like we said that today we are about to see world champions, European champions, Asian champions and many, many others. So the level is just huge. And so let's see it. Alisher is in the blue from multiple world champion and uh, Dmitry Stoyana from Bulgaria. Two-time world champion, the honored master of sport in Uzbekistan. And so the fight continues. So far, no. Oh, that's a nice attempt, and here it comes the two points for a double John Hamroev after this throw. And now we see Dmitry Stoyanov tries to respond. Uh, no way, says the referee, and no points are awarded. But that was beautiful, actually. That was a beautiful throw from Dmitry Stoyanov. Making some feints, some fake moves. And look at that move. And here comes the umpire. That's it. Unbelievable win by Dela John Hamroev. Due to an umpire, spectacular, spectacular move from the fighter from Uzbekistan. It was a very quick win. Well, you see the level. This is a true master. Just like I said, honored master of sport, two-time world champion. And uh, Dabra John Amroev advances to the semi-final. And uh, just imagine, four quarterfinals, and all of them did not go the distance. So that's quite a start. And now we move to combat sambo competition, ladies and gentlemen. And this is 79 kilograms category. And please welcome Ivan Loshkin from Russia, Kstovo versus Ahmad Boboev, representing Kazakhstan. And here we go. This is the combat sambo competition. And just like I said, it maybe you all know that in combat sambo. Kicks, punches, knee strikes are allowed to the head, to the hips, and to the body, and of course, different submissions throw just like we used to see in the sport sambo. This is a very tough sport, ladies and gentlemen, because you see the gloves, uh, which look like shin guards in MMA. So this is the full contact sport, and let's see it. By the way, Ivan Loshkin representing Stovo. Uh, Nizhny Novgorod region and a good throw down attempt and a single leg take down attempt after Ivan Loshkin. And by the way, just like I told you that the strikes are not counted in combat sambo, only wrestling moves, throw downs, sweeps, submissions, locks. And that's a good low kick, by the way, from Ivan Loshkin, who is the international master of sport and he is the World Cup winner. And as for Azamat Baboev representing Kazakhstan, he's the runner-up of the Asian Championship. 
Ivan Loshkin has a slight height advantage. And by the way, many, many good Russian MMA fighters came to mixed martial arts from Combat Sambo, Fyodor Emelianenko, Khabib Nurmagomedov, and Alek Taktarov, and many, 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 many others. Islam Mahachev, and we can count them forever, I think. So these fights are also scheduled for five minutes, just like in sports, Sambo. Ahmad tries to wrestle in a good move and a good rolling. Ivan Loshkin and he gets and he gets the leg, he catches the leg, and it could be a knee bar or something like that. Ivan Loshkin continues to work with his opponent leg, and this may be a foot lock. Ivan Loshkin. And we see that Ahmad Baboyev is struggling, and it could be a knee bar, but Ahmad Baboyev releases and the referee gives his whistle. But I think that Ivan Loshkin was that close to the victory due to a submission. So he will have another attempt, I think. And so the fight resumes. That's a good jab from Baboyev. Ivan with a jab and respond. Oh! Shot with the right hand, and down goes Ahmad Baboyev. Spectacular techniques, and that's a knockout. Unbelievable knockout by Ivan Loshkin. Whoa. So once again, Ivan Loshkin shows that he came here to secure the victory, not only in the quarterfinal, but in the whole tournament itself. Uh, just like I said that Ivan Loshkin represents Kstovo, and Kstovo is claimed to be the motherland of Sambo. And so we move to the second quarterfinal in the Combat Sambo Division. 79 kilograms. And now let's see the participants. This will be Bulgaria versus Tajikistan, if I'm not mistaken. And here they come. Emil. Nezira representing Bulgaria. Here they come. Quarterfinal number two. Emil Nezira from Bulgaria. He is the runner up of the World Championship. And uh, as for his opponents, uh, Ramazan Jumaev representing Tajikistan. He is the bronze medalist of the Asian Championship. And the winner of this bout. Oh, that's a <laughs> straight right hand from Ramazan Jumaev. And uh, the winner of this bout is about to face Ivan Loshkin in the semi-final. So... Good right hand again from Ramazan Jumaev. And a stiff jab, another one. And a single leg takedown attempt. 
Good defense from Emil Nezera, but down they go. And here are the two points in the favor of Ramazan Jumaev for that kind of throw. But Ramazan Jumaev was not going to stop. He wanted to, de to develop that position, but did not just have enough time for that. But still, he is in the lead, two to nothing. He is leading, uh, he's leading, oh, look at that exchange. And Ramazan Jumaev, I think, delivered a splendid shot from the right hand. So these two fighters are ready to brawl. They are ready to trade shots. And I remind you that according to combat samba rules, practically all the strikes are allowed. You can hit your opponent with a leg. You can hit the leg, you can hit the hip, you can hit the calf, the body, the head. Whatever you want, you can produce spinning back kicks, spinning back fists. So the arsenal is just huge. And a good throw again, and these are two points from Ramazan Jumaev. A big important for Emil Nazirov, and Emil Nazirov makes the equalizer, and he tries to show some ground and pound, and uh, this could be a knee bar by Ramazan Jumaev, and that's it! The opponent tapped out, and it's all over. Ramazan Jumaev gets the big win over the silver medalist of the World Championship. A splendid move, a splendid win by Ramazan Jumaev, and he advances to the semi-final, where he is about to face Russian Ivan Loshkin. Дамы и господа, у нас уже есть два полуфиналиста. Это Иван Ложкин, Россия, Кстова и Рамазон Шумаев. Таджикистан. Нам предстоит определить еще двух, двух полуфиналистов в последующих двух встречах. Итак, мы представляем вам третий бой боевого саба. And here is the quarterfinal number three, Kazakhstan versus Kyrgyzstan. Well, two countries that are placed not far from each other. So there we come, Jambala Kasimov from Kazakhstan. He's the Kazakhstan champion versus Darbek Karyaev from Kyrgyzia. He's the runner-up of the world championship. And now let's see it. And, and as far as we can see, that Derbeck has a slight height advantage, a reach advantage, and maybe he'll try to use this statement, he'll try to use this thing. So far, the fighters are not in a rush, not a single punch, not a single shot, and a single leg takedown attempt from Derbeck. No points so far. And so here comes Derbeck Karyaev. Trying to produce a submission. Well, just like I said, that no chokes are allowed in Sambo and in combat Sambo. Yeah. 
Well, that, that's it. <laughs> that's it. It's all over. And uh, Rebecca Riaev is the winner due to a submission and here advances to the semi-final. Well, folks, uh, just like I said, uh, a small fact, uh, you cannot choke in a sports sambo and in a com combat sambo, the chokes are allowed, and that is exactly what happened in the previous fight when uh, uh, Dair Becker Riaev defeated jean Kasima. Kasimov. So this is the quarterfinal number four, the last one. Avanessa Garyan from Russia versus Sherzadbek Ismona representing Uzbekistan. Avanessa is a European champion. Sherzadbek Ismona. Sherzadbek is the bronze medalist of the World Championship. The takedown attempt and a good sprawl by Avanes Abgaran. Nice defense. Big shots with the left hand from Avanes Abgaran. And just like I said that you will not get points for hitting, for punching and kicking. If you knock your opponent out, that's it. The points are given only for wrestling skills, for wrestling moves. Oh, that's a nice leg kick by Avanes. He pressurizes the opponent, pushing him. And a nice hit with the right hand. They went, they went off the mat. And fight resumes. Avanes continues stepping forward, controlling the center of the mat. That's a good jab, nice jab, and he stunned the opponent. And Avanes wants to develop this. Oh, that's a knee to the head! And I think that's a knockout by Avanes Abgaran. He hurt the opponent badly. And I think that he's done. He's absolutely done. That's it. Fantastic job by Avanes Abgaran. Avanes Abgaran is the winner, and he advances to the semi final where he will face Dairbek Ariyev from Kyrgyzstan.
And here we go. This is the first semi-final of the evening in the Sports Sambo, the weight category, 64 kilograms. Mikhail Diana versus Sorbonne Latifa. And I remind you that in his previous fight, Diana defeated Belek Barakana from Kyrgyzstan when he caught the opponent on the number and he defeated him. Oh, what a nice move from Sorbon Latifa, but splendidly defended by Mikhail Diana. And so far, there are no points. But at the very beginning, you see the tempo and you see the, ter the determination of these two to secure the win, to gain points, and maybe to submit to finish the opponent and not to let this fight go the distance. And uh, speaking about Sorbonne Latifov, he's the silver medalist of the World Championship and uh, in his previous fight, oh, that's a splendid, splendid job by Mihail Dianov. And here comes the first point in his favor. One nil. But this is the smallest advantage you can even imagine. Sorbonne Latifa tried to pass the guard. And we continue. So, uh, Sorbonne Latifa, in his previous fight, in his previous quarterfinal, destroyed Aram Agajanan, defeated him, defeating him with a flawless victory, with a score eight to nothing. These are the Sambo rules. If you score eight points more than your opponent, you get the win. And Dianov collects another point. Well, that's good for him, because he will, if he will gain points like this, one after another, he, with this, with this kind of, with a single point, he closes himself to the whole victory. Well, a slight pause. And the fight can be continued. This is the first semi-final of our Grand Prix. Fight of a champions, Vladimir. By the way, by the way Vladimir is uh, a bunch of uh, Sambo sport clubs that are placed all over Russia. And the fight resumes. And we see that this fight, of course, will is uh, much more close than the previous one because these two can match each other. Single leg grip from Mikhail. And we see that the fighters, the wrestlers are wearing coats. So to say in Russia, we call them coats, uh, red and the blue. And of course, you can use this form to throw your opponent down because this is just like uh, nowadays it's no points for Mikhail because Sarbonne Latif have defended himself from being thrown on the mat, on the canvas. Well, and it's really similar for like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Gi or no Gi. Oh, but not this time. Splendid attempt, but not good enough to gain points. And we can't but agree with the referee not giving points for that move, but it was really a prospective move. And uh, Mikhail Dianov gets the warning for not being active. Well, I think that um, Dianov tries to save this advantage, but he cannot do it staying without movement, doing nothing, because the opponent is really tough. And uh, if you will collect warnings just like this, uh, your opponent will get points for 
your illegal moves or not or doing nothing and he will match you he can get the equalizer and maybe he can well get the whole win and another warning and well it is what it is and two points for uh, Sorbon Latifov so that is the result of the passiveness, so to say, of Mikhail Dijanov, because he just tried to save, he just tried to protect himself from the movements, from the opponent's attacks, and actually was his big mistake. No, that was just one point. And uh, now the score is equal to all, and only 90 seconds to go in this fight. And we see that Mikhail Dijanov starts to get tired. So that is exactly what I was speaking about, meaning the fatigue and the stamina and the cardio, of course, because in wrestling it is a very, very important fact. Well, it's a really important fact in the whole sport, whatever you name, but in wrestling and in sambo itself, well, it's really, really important because if you, if you are not prepared physically, if you don't have a good cardio, well, you will have big problems on the mat fighting your opponents. And Mikhail Dyanov is uh, on his back, and here comes the holding. Here comes the holding from Sorbon Latifov, and he needs to hold his opponent for 30 seconds. And then he will get points, and we see that uh, Mikhail Dyanov is just doing nothing, just laying on his back and waiting until the time will pass, until the time expires. Well, did he give up or not? Maybe he tr and four points in the favor of uh, Sorbon Latifov, and he's in the full mount position, and he tries to catch the hand in order to win the fight due to an armbar, and just 21 seconds to go. This is the really hard fight for both, but I think that Mikhail Dianov had much more problems. Good grip for a Serban Latifov hand. He doesn't let the opponent do something and the time expires and that's it. It's all over. Serban Latifov gets the big win with the score 6-2. And he advances to the... Mikhail Dijanov gets the bronze. And so here we come. This is the semi-final number two. And so here we go, the semi-final number two. Parasat Zhumabai from Kazakhstan. He's the runner-up of the World Championship and his opponent from 
Uzbekistan, he is two-time world champion, Tavla John Hamroyev. I think that these two definitely know each other and maybe they even met each other because, well, it's a normal story for the amateur tournaments when you have to, uh, to fight several bouts per tournament, especially if you go to the final and uh, you go from one tournament to another and your opponents go from one tournament to another and of course you see him, you fight him, you know him and sometimes it is really hard to surprise your opponents when he, well, actually knows you by heart. And here comes the good attempt on the armbar from Davla John Hamroev. But he breaks the grip. And Parasad Jumabai tried to get the control of the back, but the whistle went. And they get back to the feet. But it was a very good attempt for Davla John Hamroev, I think. And he had a really good chance to finish the opponent. To make him tap. Parasad Jumabai tries to use this position, but Devla John Hamroev manages to escape and he gets the control back. Two time world champion Devla John Hamroev is a strong favorite of the whole tournament and he proved it in his previous fight when he defeated Dmitry Stoyanov from Bulgaria with an armbar and was a really, really fast victory. And was actually a predictable victory, so to say. And of course, we cannot predict the result of this fight because mm, the level is quite equal. Parasad Jumabai is the runner-up of the World Cup. So he knows how to secure big wins. He knows how to defeat strong opponents, and the same we can say about Davla John Hamroev. And two minutes passed already, and so far there are no points for each side. And a good throw attempt while well, grabbing both hands. And uh, Parasad Jumabai is about to get the warning of non-fighting. Yeah, no, Davla John Hamroev tries to stay active and he is more active than the opponent. And a sweep attempt from Parasat. I remind you that Parasat from Kazakhstan is in the red form and Davla John Hamroev from Uzbekistan is in the blue. Davla John Hamroev. Again, tries to produce some throws, some attempts. Breaks the grip. Gets the coats and good defense from Parasad Jumabai. But still, we see that Devla John is much more active. And as for Parasad Jumabai, uh, he works very carefully because he doesn't want to make a mistake. And wow, that could be a good counter by Devla John Hamroev. Well, when you see such kind of a fight like uh, Parasat Jumabai versus Davla John Hamroev, you can easily compare it with a chess match. Because we see how many preparation moves, preparative moves both fighters are making in order to find the proper moment to attack. They try to confuse the opponent, they try to hide their moves that try to hide their uh, pure plan for this fight or for a particular move. And when you, uh, they are making some faint moves, some faint grips, and so on and so forth. And afterwards, when they find the right moment, they make that move. They make it really fast, like Cobra throw and so, or something like that. And well, that is the beauty of Sambo, of wrestling. 
because sometimes you think that the pace is pretty low and the fighters are just doing nothing, just standing in front of each other, just trying to grab the coat, trying to grab the leg, and the speed is pretty low, but at some moment, at another second, bam, and it's all over. This is the submission or the throwdown or something like that. Goes Prowl from Dabla John Hamroyev. Nice defense, and he gets the foot. Working with the foot, and this may be a submission. It can be a foot lock, so to say, and he gets the back. And this can... And an E-bar now. And just 16 seconds to go in this fight. So far, no points awarded. But... I think that you will agree with me that this fight is really tense and it's pretty emotional. Five seconds. And an armbar attempt from the fighter from Uzbekistan, uh, but the time expires and that's it. And the honored master of sport, two time world champion Devla John Hamroyev is the winner of the fight. And he advances to the final where he is about to face Sarbon Latifa. And now we stick to the combat sambo competition and to the semi-final bouts. So here we come, the first semi-final of the evening in the Combat Sambo competition. Ivan Loshkin from Stova versus Ramazan Jumaev representing Tajikistan. Here we go, Ivan Loshkin in his previous fight destroyed Ahmad Baboy from Kazakhstan with a blistering knockout with a single punch from a right hand. And as for Ramazan Jumaev, he outclassed Emil Nezira from Bulgaria due to a knee bar. So here we go, Ivan Loshkin is an international master of sport in Russia. He is the World Cup winner. Ramazan Jumaev. Oh, spinning back kick straight to the head from Ivan Loshkin. And we remember this kind of fight and this kind of strike in the previous World Championship. And this was, and that time it was a knockout actually, but this time he just touched the head. And uh, Ramazan Jumaev gets the warning for getting out of the mat. Good leg kick. Oh, look at that kicks from Ivan Loshkin. And, you know, he showed that move when the fist and the hand go to a nice knee to the body from Ivan Loshkin. And I think, and here's the headbutts. The headbutts are allowed in combat sambo. And here comes the throw from Ramazan Jumaev, but nicely defended by Ivan Loshkin. And he continues bidding. Oh, look at this! This is the knockdown. Ivan Loshkin with a splendid headbutt, and he puts his opponent down. 
And I think it can be it. Nine, 10, he's out, he's out. This is the knockout victory for Ivan Lushkin representing, representing Stava. Spectacular, unbelievable win. And I think that Ivan Lushkin broke his opponent's nose. And he advances to the final. Monstrous knockout by Ivan Lashkin from Russia. And I did really love the kicks from Ivan Lashkin because I think that he spent some days or maybe months uh, practicing Wushu Sangda or Taekwondo or Karate or something like that. Very technical fighter, technical kicks, and of course, the key move of the fight, outstanding headbutt. Tajikistan. Arbita. Tulikin. Erbo. Kazakhstan. Bakalai Sudia. Bravo. Iva. Asia. And here they come. This is the second semi final of the combat sample competition. The weight category is 79 kilograms, and this is the battle of the champions from Zerzhinsk, Russia, Nizhny Novgorod region. And here we go. Berbeck Karyaev, the runner-up of the World Championship versus Amanes Abgaran, the European champion. In his previous fight, Berbeck destroyed the fighter from Kazakhstan due to a choke using the coat, by the way. And as for Abanas Abgaran, he provided a splendid knee bar. And so let's see it. The second semi-final. So far, the fight is not in a rush, but you see the distance. It's pretty close. And Amanes is ready to attack. And actually, he did it with an inside low kick. Tire back. Oh, that's a good, good leg kick from Amanes. Good combination. One, two combination from Amanes. Nice, nice low kick again. And we see that um, Derbeck Karyaev does not defend the hip. So that's why Avanes of Garan can use it. He can ruin the leg, the leading leg of the opponent. And that thing can slow him down. And sometimes we see even knockouts after a good low kick. Especially if you fight uh, the Muay Thai practitioner or a professional kickboxer. The good low kick can do, can make the difference. So far, Anderbeck Ariyev is really careful. One, two combination again, but with the right hand, he hit the shoulder, not the head. But Ariyev is still waiting, is still searching for a proper moment to attack.
And they're back as the warning from the referee because he didn't do anything at all during the practically two minutes of the fight. Well, to my mind, Tavanes of Garea needs to stick to low kicks and inside low kicks and outside low kicks. And Dyerbeck tries to attack. And Amanes showed that it was an eye poke. But the referee just did not mention it, and the fight continues. Nice left hook from Dyerbeck. And the corner shouts to Amanes of Garan to use combinations, to use a bunch of punches and kicks. And there he comes, and a nice right hand. And a half of the fight passed. Karyaev missed with his leg kick, but Havanas did not use it. And now we see that Dyerbeck tries to defend his left hip of not getting beaten. And a stiff jab from Havanas. And so far, you see that the guys just not try to shorten the distance to come closer and to stick to wrestling. Nice shot with a left hook. Havanas Abgaran delivers a beautiful strike. But Dyerbeck just eats this punch. And there he comes. And one point for Dyerbeck Karyaev. He gets the control of the back. And maybe this will be a choke. And, uh, and I think that Dyerbeck Karyaev tries to use the code just like he did in the previous fight. But Avanesa Gerian is much more experienced. Good ground and pound from Derbek Karyaev. Well, Derbek Karyaev definitely equalized in this fight. And now we ha we're having a toe to toe fight. Bo more than that, Abgaran gets the warning. And so the corner tells to Amanes to stick to the attacking moves. He wants him to come forward to create the pressure on the opponents. Avanes is being told not to stick to just one power shot and just to go to combinations. Not to... and one, two. And a double leg takedown, marvelous, splendid move. And now the score is equal, 1-0. And I think that uh, now Amanas Abgaran can have the advantage, the psychological advantage, so to say. He can be more determined. He can get the initiative in this fight, but just like I said, that everything depends on the cardio and on the stamina. And the last 30 seconds of the fight and the headbutt from their back. And here they come, working and clinch. And a throw down attempt, no points. And a good position for their back, and this can be a full mount. And there it is. Their back will try to make it a number. And this is the attempt of the submission. Two, one, and that's it. The time expires. And I think that, well, just their back, Karyaev lost the time. And the uh, and with a minimum advantage, Avanes Abgaran gets the win. And he advances to the final. And Arbek Karyaev gets the bronze. And now we are about to have a little pause. And afterwards, we will see the final bouts in the sport sambo and in the combat sambo. And of course, the main event, the main event, the heavyweights will face each other. It will be a heavyweight clash. Janto Nana Maxwell versus Magomed Tuchala. Stay tuned.
друзья, прошу всех занимать свои места. Три минуты до начала финальных встреч. И я напоминаю, что нас сегодня с вами ждет еще один специальный бой. Боец Нижегородской области встретится с действующим чемпионом мира по боевому САПА, бойцом из Камеруна. Состоится это совсем скоро. У нас пока еще идут повторы. Я хотел бы пообщаться немножко с вами. Попрошу наших световиков немножко осветить зал, чтобы я хотя бы видел людей. Теперь вы в свете, некомфортно, да? Спали. Не, ну верните, верните, пусть они взбодрятся немножко. Друзья, как настроение? В общем так, не думайте, что это легко. Я по-настоящему скажу, я не делал этого давно. Но мне задали вопрос, я должен дать ответ. Многие из Зержинска знают, что я на ходу сочиняю рэп. Я понимаю, что я сейчас немножко не в теме, но раз я стою рядом с ковром и у сцены, я должен это сделать прямо сейчас. И надеюсь, людей, которые поднимают кулаки, это ведет в экстаз. Да, я говорю именно о тебе, поднимите руки выше. Я надеюсь, что тебе и твоему лысому другу это снесет крышу. Я не знаю, как зовут друга, но он здоровяк. Я надеюсь, что вам вдвоем без женщин не шлят. Пока все остальные оценивают мое чувство юмора, я продолжаю. Я надеюсь, что вы уже убедились, что я на ходу сочиняю. Сюдаиски аплодируют мне, и я очень рад. Поэтому я рифмую все слова подряд. Огромное спасибо. Я надеюсь, что я не выгляжу как-то странно. И надеюсь, что сюдаиски вы не воспринимают мои слова не банально. Я понимаю, те из вас, сержинцы, кому это не знакомо, будут уверены, что я заранее сочинил все это дома. Но поверьте, пусть у меня в голове играет так, и все, что я сочиняю на ходу, я сочиняю ништяк. Спасибо большое, дорогие друзья. У меня действительно на ходу изо рта вылетают все эти слова. И поверьте, в них очень много плюсов. Я знаю, что этого ждал Андрей Барынкин и Вати Кусов. Кстати, где Вати Кусов? Я в темноте его не вижу. У него на по-любому должно снести крышу. Хотя в его возрасте это скорее вызовет грыжу. После этих слов меня точно ждет успех, потому что я услышал громкий, яркий женский смех. Но я понимаю, у меня в голове начинается паника, скорее всего, смеются не моей шуткой, а конкретно над Вадиком. Спасибо большое, дорогие друзья. Я понимаю, что я веду себя нагло, у меня есть усы, а вот у этого парня есть красивые красные трусы. Он стоит ко мне спиной, он этого не видит и переливается он зря, потому что именно о нем я на ходу сочиняю все эти слова. Дорогой мой друг, я тебе хочу сказать, что нам всем комфортно, но если что, наверняка в Фоке есть отдельная комната. Спасибо большое всем тем, кто здесь. Для меня находиться в Нижегородской области – это всегда отдельная честь. И я могу сказать, что я веду себя довольно упрямо, особенно тогда, когда здесь присутствует Олег Токтаров. Олегу Николаевичу огромное спасибо. Он точно никогда не слышал моего речитатива. Он даже, наверное, не понимает, как у меня на ходу сочиняются все эти слова. Однако, Олег Николаевич, все это специально для тебя. Я могу сказать, что у меня на ходу сочиняется очень много слов. Особенно я могу сочинять про город Саров. Тем более это все находится рядом. Я понимаю всех этих ребят и людей одним лишь только взглядом. И прошу лысых друзей, которые приехали к нам, уделять нам немножко больше внимания. Потому что прямо сейчас я вижу, как ваше подсознание занято не мной, а разговорами с самим собой. Пожалуйста, отвлеките но меня от этого зрелища. Я могу сказать, что сейчас мне как будто бы делать нечего. Мужчина, вы станете главным символом сегодняшнего турнира. Не потому, что вы какой-то обуза, а потому, что у меня тоже есть пуза. Дорогие друзья, спасибо вам огромное. Все мы с вами вместе одна команда. Хотя бы потому, что мы все пропагандируем самбо. И даже те, кто пришли сюда очень серьезные в галстуках, точно понимают, что сегодня мы определим чемпионов, даже если ночью. И те, кто уже поняли, что сочиняется это все на ходу, прямо сейчас, дорогие друзья, я вам это докажу. Мужчина, вы сидите и очень серьезно смотрите на меня. Вы даже не понимаете, что сейчас о вас эти слова. Над вами сидит какая-то семья. Пусть мой стиль сейчас очень тонок. Какой-то бокал рядом с вами за спиной поставил ребенок. 
Как вас зовут, я не знаю, но они знают, что они за вами. Я понимаю, что вы с ними когда-то уже станете друзьями, но сейчас вы начнете улыбаться. Поверьте, не надо в этом сомневаться. Ваши руки, которые сейчас на поясе, уже говорят об этом. И вам, поверьте, не нужны никакие ответы. Да, да, этот рассказ я сочиняю прямо сейчас и именно о вас. Честно, извините за пару моих строк, абсолютно не стыдно держать руки между ног. Теперь вы точно поняли, что говорил я все это время о вас, дорогой мой друг. Я понимаю, что это не слух. Те ребята, которые сидят на задних рядах, пусть вас никогда не поглотит страх. И поверьте, поднимите руки вверх, тогда вас точно будет ждать успех. Пусть сетка какая-то странная на окне за вашей спиной. Однако, поверьте, я знаю, что вы всегда готовы ринуться в бой. Вас там довольно немного, человек восемь. Но я знаю, успех вас и удачи никогда не бросят. Спасибо всем, кто улыбается. Задним рядам тоже. И извините за ведущего с такой наглой рожей. Зато я надел черный хороший костюм. И поэтому я не улыбаюсь, я угрю. Я хочу сказать, что если бы это было самбо, за этот фристайл мне бы дали 8 баллов. Ну а человек, которого, про которого я пузо сказал, дал бы мне... Спасибо, друзья. Впереди финалы. Вот что я хотел зарифмовать со словом 8 баллов. Не знаю, что подумали вы. Друзья, как настроение? А где, кстати, Ватик Усов, для которого я все это делал? Ты здесь. Для меня это большая честь. Моих плюсов не перечесть. Я надеюсь, после этого ко мне не вернется месть. Смотрите, как я хорошо делаю это все. Сам от себя в шоке. В общем, дорогие друзья, огромное спасибо. Для меня большая честь, что я уже так много лет, пусть и не часто, приезжаю в Дзержинск. Меня тепло встречают мои друзья. И платят мне за это деньги. А, спасибо огромное! Аплодисменты вам! Буквально через минуту мы возвращаемся. Нас ждет финал в спортивном самбо. Развязка. Мы поймем, кто будет чемпионом в боевом разделе. И ждет специальный поединок. Вы готовы? Отлично. Мы объявляем судейскую бригаду и скоро начинаем. Руководитель ковра, судья международной категории. Тулиген Эрбо, Казахстан. Арбитр, судья международной категории Маржинов Алексей, Россия. Боковой судья Фролов Иван, Россия. Дамы и господа, через считанные минуты. Мы выявим победителя в первой восьмерке по правилам спортивного раздела самбо весовой категории до 64 килограммов. Борцы приглашаются на сцену под ваши аплодисменты! Мы напоминаем, что это битва первая. Сегодня нас ждут две восьмерки. У нас уже прошло больше восьми поединков. Совсем скоро мы определим, кто же станет чемпионом в спортивном и боевом разделе. Плюс нас ждет специальное событие, главный бой вечера, но об этом позже. Сейчас финал в спортивном самбо в весовой категории до 64 килограммов. Город Держи! Вы готовы! And so here we go, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the final bout of the tournament the battle of the champions Vladimir Dzerzhinsk city Nizhny Novgorod region and this is the final of the sport sambo competition the weight category 64 kilograms
And here comes Sarban Latifa representing Tajikistan. And his opponent, Double John Hamroy from Uzbekistan. Well, Sarban Latifa from Tajikistan. He's the runner-up of the World Championship. And as for Alisher Davlajon Hamroev from Uzbekistan, he's two-time world champion. Two big guns clashed here at this match in Dzerzhinsk to find out who is the best, who is the better guy. And by the way, I remind you that the winner of this Grand Prix will get the belt, the championship belt, and of course the prize. And speaking about the way of these two, Sarbon Latifa firstly defeated Aram Agajanian with a flawless victory, scoring eight points. And in his semi final, Sarbon Latifa destroyed Mikhail Dianov, defeating him with the armbar. And as for his opponent, Alisher Davlajon Ahmroy from Uzbekistan. Firstly, he outclassed Dmitry Stoyanov from Bulgaria. And then in the semi-final, he defeated <laughs> Nasser al Jumabai from Kazakhstan. So far, there are no points scored. And I remind you that in sports sambo, no strikes are allowed. Only submissions, throws, sweeps, grips. And by the way, in sports sambo, there are no chokes. Good move, it could be, but perfectly defended by Davla John Hamroev. And so the fight resumes. Just like we all expected, this fight is to be very close. Oh, that's a good throw attempt by Devlajor Hamroev, and I think that he's, he has, he's more active, so that's why the opponent gets the warning. Well, actually, uh, Devlajor Hamroev won the previous match, the semi-final uh, match, because of his activeness. Devlajor Hamroev turned on his chest at the last moment, so that's why he did not allow the opponent to throw him on his back or on the side part of the body. And no points so far. And I remind you that after this fight, we are about to see the final in the combat sambo and the main event the heavyweight division, the reigning world champion from Cameroon. And now we see how the fighters are working on their grips, trying to find the proper one, trying to find the better moment for a sweep or for the throw. But so far, the defense is much better than the attack. And here comes Tavla John Humroev. But Sarban Latifov denied that attempt, defending himself and getting out of the tricky position. And two minutes to go in this fight so far. There are no points yet. And till the time expires, of course, now the single move, the single point in this particular fight will decide, I think, because the fight is really close. And uh, Davla John represents Uzbekistan, Sorbonne represents Tajikistan. So I think that these two 
have seen each other many times at the Asian Championships, at the World Championships, and I think that they know each other. They know each other maybe by heart. They learn each other by heart. So it's really hard in this case to surprise your opponent, to find something new and to produce something new. And don't forget the fact that recently there was a world championship, so maybe these two are not in the best shape. And they have already won two previous fights. And so far, a slight advantage in favor of uh, Tavla John Hamroev, so that's why he's leading the fight with just one advantage. 35 seconds. So far, no points awarded. Only attempts, only preparative moves. Fighting for the grip, breaking the grip. Good defense from Devlajot Hamroev. Once again, he rolled around, turned around, falling on his chest, and he gets the warning. He's really tired, we see. He's breathing heavily, and he takes a slight pause to fix his shoes. Then 16 seconds. Well, these last seconds can be decisive, and just like I said, that a single move that will count can make the difference in this fight, and we will know the victor. Well, we will know him anyway. Three seconds. And that's it. The time expires. And according to the sports samba rules, the winner is Alisher Davla John Hamroy from Uzbekistan, two-time world champion gets the win in this tournament. And now... We are about to have the awards ceremony. Tabla John will get the gold medal, will get the belt, and he left Sarban Latifa with a silver medal. But nevertheless, it was a nice fight. It was a nice tournament for all of them, I think. And after this award ceremony, we are about to have maybe the combat Sambo final. I said maybe because as far as I knew, as far as I know, one of the competitors, one of the finalists got injured and maybe there will be no final in the combat Sambo, unfortunately, but it is what it is. When you have several fights per one tournament and per one day, especially according to the toughness of a martial art like Combat Sambo, well, no wonder that fighters get injured and they roll out of the tournaments and sometimes it happens in final.
приглашаем победителей призера весовой категории до 64 килограммов пройти на сцену. Наши почетные гости приглашаются для награждения. And here they come. The winners. The winner and the medalist. Битва первая. Владимир Курадин Сержицкий. По правилам спортивного сапа. Весовой категории до 64 килограммов. Третье место завоевали. Парасад Шумабай. Казахстан. And so the belt finds his master, finds his honor, and the winner of the fight. And here comes the Russian national, the Uzbekistan national anthem. And so we stick to the final in the combat sambo competition, 79 kilograms. And here they come, Ivan Loshkin. He's in the red form, but he is all alone. Silo 
Well, I'm on ass up, go down from Russia. Withdrew from the final. I don't know why, maybe due to an injury or some, due to some other reasons. And so Ivan Loshkin is the winner of the Grand Prix. And now let us stick to the awards ceremony. And now Ivan Loshkin is declared as the winner. So, we are waiting for the award ceremony. And uh, after that, we are about to stick to the main events, to the heavyweight fights between Gentu Nana Maxwell from Cameroon and Magomed Tuchalov from Kstava, Nizhny Novgorod region. But before that, these warriors are about to get their medals and belts and well-deserved prize. Ramazan Jumayev from Tajikistan also gets the bronze and uh, Jambolak Kasimov. Uh, Derbek Karyayev, beg your pardon, from Kyrgyzstan is the bronze medalist of the Grand Prix. And the silver, silver medalist, Avanessa Garan from Russia. And maybe they decided not to fight each other because they represent the same country. And uh, I hope that Avanessa Garan is not injured seriously. But if he does, this is the reason why he didn't come. He didn't step into the mats to fight in the final because I would love to see this fight. You know what? Sometimes Russian fighters, especially from North Caucasus, they say that they do not want to fight Russians and Muslims, but they do it all the time during the amateur tournaments, in combat sambo, in boxing, in taekwondo, wushu sangda, anywhere. They fight each other, but when it comes up to the professional fights, they say, we're not going to do it. Well, that, this is their own choice. We're not judging them. I'm just telling you this story. But nevertheless, unfortunately, we will not see the final in this category. That's a bit of a shame, but and here comes the Russian national anthem.
Спасибо огромное почетным гостям, нашему чемпиону и призерам. Мы готовимся к главному событию вечера. Дамы и господа, дорогие друзья, впереди нас ждет главное событие вечера, и это делает наш турнир еще более оригинальным. Потому что такого еще в истории турниров Владимир не было. Для тех, кто не знает, у нас ведется трансляция прямая на два YouTube канала и будет трансляция на трех телеканала. В том числе нас будут смотреть по всему миру, и поэтому прямо сейчас... Мы хотели бы обратиться ко всем людям, которые будут смотреть нас за пределами России, потому что следующий поединок, который является главным событием сегодняшнего вечера, является международным. Ladies and gentlemen, and all the sample lovers, we know that our sample sport was officially recognized as the Olympic sports. In a few minutes, you will see the main events of our evening. Ladies and gentlemen, now we'd like to introduce to you two Sambo fighters. Combat Sambo is recognized as, a, as an Olympic sport, and right now I'd like to welcome on our stage two best fighters representing Combat Sambo. Дамы и господа, недавно Самбо стал олимпийским видом спорта, и, конечно, его боевой раздел является одним из самых зрелищных. Сегодня здесь нас ждет международный поединок по правилам боевого самбо. И я хотел бы прямо сейчас на нашей сцене представить вам участников этого поединка. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to our stage the participating fighter. Of our main event of the evening. Rusty Foreman in the Grand Four. From Cameroon, the world champion. Rusty Foreman. By a freestyle champion. Champion Mira. And so here we go, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the main event of the evening. And two big guns are about to appear on the mat and about to have a big clash. Jantu Nana Maxwell versus Magomed Tuchelov, and Jantu is claimed as a reigning world champion. He's from Cameroon, and his opponent, Magomed Tuchelov, representing Stova, Nizhny Novgorod region. He is the bronze medalist of the Russian national championship in 2021. And this fight is scheduled for five minutes. And here we go. I remind you that all the strikes, kicks, headbutts are allowed. Punches, knee strikes. And so let's see it. A very tough test for Magomed Tuchalov because we see that he's a little bit lighter. 
a little bit smaller, but I think that he's about to have the speed advantage. And I hope that he's going to use it. Fighter from Cameroon is really big, it's really heavy. That's a good leg kick from Jantu. And forward comes Fighter from Cameroon with a bunch of with bunch of punches, and now he gets the top position. And now knees can be used here. So that's why Magomed has to be very attentive and has to be very careful. And knee to the body. Good shots with the right hand from John Tu. And once again, I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that the points are not given for strikes, for punches and kicks. Only throws and submissions and wrestling moves are counted. And the corner tells to Magomed Tuchalov not to waste the powers in wrestling, but just to try to use his speed, his footwork, and try to stand on his feet and to use his striking abilities. But so far, the pace is not really high. Good leg kick from Chen Tu. And a straight left hand from Magomed. Nice low kick. And Magomed definitely has the speed advantage. And I think that it can be very useful for him. So far, Magomed tries to use those low, low kicks. And he wants to ruin the leading leg of Jantu. Here is the body shot and the right hook from Magomed. Wow, that was a huge leg kick from Jantu. This guy is really big, he's really heavy, and down they go. And here comes the two points in favor of Jantu and Maxwell. And now he gets on top position again. And happily for Magomed Tachalov, Jantu did not have the time to produce some good ground and pound. And we saw that he wanted to. Unfortunately, Magomed Tachalov so far does not use the speed. But I think that he can. Another inside low kick from Magomed Tachalov. And I think that he's going to raise his kicks up and try to get the head. But he uses the straight left hand and another one. And you hear the crowd, they shout, Russia, Russia, cheering. Magomed. Gentu wanted to use the elbow. And just two minutes left in the fight. And Alex Tektarov is cheering Cameron, Gentu, and Maxwell. Alex Tatar, the first ever Russian UFC champion. The second was Khabib. The combat sambo champion also. Oh, that was a big hit from John Tu, but happily for Magomed, he missed it. And another throw attempt from John Tu Maxwell. And now he gets the position behind the opponent, trying to rain some shots, some punches on his opponent's head. And so the whistle goes. So far, Maxwell is in the lead two to nothing. And uh, Magomed Tuchalov being a lighter fighter, we see that he's a little bit tired. He's running out of gas. But 90 seconds to go, even less in this fight, and he needs to create the pressure on his opponent. He needs to come forward, he needs to... That's a good kick from Magomed. Big hand with the right hand from Magomed to Cholov. But I don't think that he needs to wrestle with his opponent because the opponent, the Chantu, is much more heavier and bigger than him, and it's really hard to match the power to match the weights and another attempt. That's a good move by Maga, counter move from Magomed Tuchalov. And now he can use this position. He gets the control of the back. And 40 seconds, 40 seconds to go. Maga, 40 seconds, 40 seconds. 
And the corner tells Tomagamet Ocello to use the footwork and forward he comes. Good sprawl from Gento. Shots with the left hand to the body and he tries to reach the jaw. So many stops in this fight so far. Both, both fighters are breathing heavily. The pace is pretty low. So I think that this is the good chance for Magomed Kuchalov to secure several points at the knee to the head, but missed. And a counter move from Jantu, and now he gets the top position and he gets one point. And the score now is three to nothing. And big strikes are coming from Jantu straight to the head of Maga. Not much time left in this fight. Just 20, uh, just 12 seconds for Maga to chill, to save himself and to reverse this fight, to change the way of this bout. But we see that he is completely exhausted. To Chalov is preparing the spinning kick or the spinning punch. And forward he comes with a flying knee attempt. Three, two, one, and that's it. And the time expires. Unfortunately for the Local crowd, Magomed Tuchalov will not get the victory today. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. And the big man from Cameroon this is, is celebrating his victory. Four. Well, I think it was well deserved, but unfortunately for Magomed Tuchalov, he could not use the, speed, uh, the advantage of his speed. He could not use the leg kicks, the punches, the combinations. Well, it is what it is. This is the sport, this is the combat sport. And today, Nana Maxwell Janto was the better man. He was a stronger fighter. And he will and he will be declared as the winner. And now we are about to see the final award ceremony. Итак, дорогие друзья, Олег Тактаров, Андрей Маренкин приглашаются на сцену для проведения церемонии награждения. Друзья мои, Андрей Барыкин, Олег Тахтаров приглашаются на сцену для проведения церемонии награждения. So, Олег Тахтаров, our Sambo and UFC and MMA legend is invited to rise up on the stage in order to to get them to bring the medal to the winner of the fight, John to Maxwell Nana. Well, you know what? For me, it is well completely surprising that the fighter from Cameroon reached the top of the world championship and uh, well because just like I said that in the world championship the Russian fighters always get gold medals they always win and they always fight with the Ukrainian fighters Belarus fighters where Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan fighters sometimes uh, fighters from the Western Europe come, strong fighters, and uh, well, but not really often, but they show good opposition for the Russians and the others. But seeing the Cameron fighter, especially in the heavyweight division, for me, it's quite surprising. Well, well that's good, that's good, uh, because when uh, we see so many countries standing on the podium, uh, Cameroon and many, many others, maybe from the US, maybe from Asia, 
and uh, uh, because well uh, we all understand that uh, when we speak about judo or uh, so Japanese wrestlers are always on the podium if we speak about sambo Russian fighters and wrestlers are always on the podium but now, when we Please speak it about Taekwondo, Russian and Korean fighters fight so are so always on the podium. And, uh, well, I can count, I can number, number lots of examples, but... So, and uh, when you see the Cameroon fighter standing on the top of the podium, listening to his national anthem that means that the geography the geography of sambo is developing that it is increasing that any fighter from any country can be the best and uh, can get the win at such a tough combat sport as the combat sambo is and now here comes the award ceremony and Janto Nana Maxwell defeated fighter from Russia, Magomed Tuchalov. And just like I said, as for me, it was a well-deserved victory. Unfortunately, Magomed Tuchalov could not use his advantages. The advantage of his speed, techniques, combinations, shots, kicks, elbow strikes, but So that means the only one thing that Magomed Tuchala still has a lot to improve. He has a lot to deal with and Jantu uh, is the world champion. Uh, Magomed Tuchala is the Russian championship medalist, bronze medalist. He is not even the runner-up. But he is the youngster. He is just 22 years old, as far as I remember. So I think that he will show himself at the further tournaments and uh, he will make the step forward, a step on top. And so, Gentu gets his belt, gets his medal, gets his main prize. Well, this is the Cameron National Anthem. Well, this is the end of the 26th tournament, Samba tournament, the champions, the battle of the champions in the great memory of the European champion. And, uh, well, we do not say farewell, we just say goodbye. So it's time to to say goodbye, and my name is Roman Mazurov. Thank you for your deep attention. Take care, bye-bye, and behave.